Hey everybody, I'm going to talk really loud because we're on a back road and we're all kinds of bumpy today. We're of course the Radley 1989 F Super Duty. Yes, it is a 89 F Super Duty because technically in 89 they did not make an F450. A lot of people call these trucks F450s. Officially Ford did not make an F450 in the 80s. I don't believe they started doing that until like the mid to late 90s. Um, but these early square body trucks with the 10 lugs were called F Super Duties. So, this is a 1989 F Super Duty. Go ahead and correct me in the comments and tell me I'm wrong. Anyway, a lot of you have asked about towing videos. We do not typically tow with this truck. It is our service truck. So we have our welder generator on it, we have our MIG welder, we have our air compressor, we have all of our tools. The truck probably weighs about 10,000, maybe 11,000 pounds on the high side, especially when we have extra stuff in the bed like we have today. Um, we are towing a 1999 F-250 Super Duty. It is a full drive crew cab, short bed truck, some pretty decently sized tires on it, and the V10 6.8 Triton 2 valve. The reason we are towing this is because I was doing work for a customer. He decided that he no longer wanted to continue doing work for it <coughs> on it because it wasn't worth it. He was a young guy. He made a very expensive mistake. What he did was he tried to change the oil in this truck himself. Nothing wrong with that. The problem is, is he drained the transmission fluid and then added seven more quarts to the engine crankcase. So what happened was, is he drove the truck like that. And where we live, obviously there's a lot of hills. He drove it up a big hill and all that oil went to the back of the oil pan and hydrolocked cylinders, rod broke, spun around, put two holes in the side of the block, parts everywhere, yada, yada, yada. With that being said, he had also driven the truck with no transmission fluid in the pan, except for what was left, of course, in the torque converter and in the valve body. So, <clears throat> yeah, it got brand majorly low on transmission fluid at the same time. There was a lot of shavings, a lot of metal in that transmission pan when we dropped it, and it just wasn't good. So, where does that leave us? Well, we're towing in the mountains. Yes, we are actually on a mountain. We're up into probably about 3,000 feet right now. We're climbing towards 4,000 feet in elevation. So yes, you'll get to see how it tows at a little bit higher altitude. It's probably about 40 degrees, kind of chilly this morning, um, which is probably good. The truck's staying nice and cool. Temperature gauge is staying between the R and the M, which is normal. And we are towing with an IDI. It is a 89, originally an NA truck with a T19. That has now been swapped to a 9394. IDI turbo, it is a true turbo motor with a factory turbo and turbo rods and a ZF5 swap with 513 rear gears because that's what these trucks typically came with, either 513s or 463s. I am in the market for a set of 463s. I found a really nice guy in Pennsylvania that hopefully has a set and we're looking to hopefully get that from him in the coming weeks. He's supposed to be coming down to Georgia and when he does, I told him I'd give him a couple extra bucks for the headache if he would uh, bring those down to us because it would be really, really appreciated. Uh, mainly because of where he's at in Pennsylvania is like five hours away. So how does it tow? Well, this truck isn't completely stock. It does have two flats on the injection pump. I just felt majorly in the turn on there. Um, it has two flats on the injection pump, about a half turn on the torque screw. The 9394s have a torque screw to limit low fueling down low. Um, very small adjustment there, and it has a blocked off wastegate, so our peak boost is pretty mild. At about 3,000 RPMs, we can make about 9 pounds of boost, which is basically nothing. Uh, but it's enough to, you know, keep the truck healthy, it doesn't smoke a lot. And we are pulling some pretty big hills right now. We are in third gear, 2,600 RPMs at about 30 miles per hour. But once again, this is a curvy, windy, steep mountain, probably varying between about 4% grade and probably about 8% grade. So yeah. And I wish you guys could see behind me a little bit better, but if you look, we have basically no smoke at all here. Um, it does pretty well. Uh, being able to pull these hills at this speed is decent, and mainly that's credited to the 513 gears. Um, I don't want to give people false hope. These 450s, as they're called, or Super Duties, however you want to list them or call them, especially since this one has the turbo swap, 
is going to run a lot different than say an NA uh, 73 or 69 would with say a C6 or even a T19 behind it. Um, most of your 250s, 350s with a C6 are going to have, or sorry, 250s, 350s, yes, with a C6 would have something like a 308 rear gear. That's going to make towing really, really terrible. Um, no matter what you do. Going up to fourth here because we're on some smaller hills. We've got a bunch of water and mud in the road here. Um, definitely something to be aware of. Right now our temperature gauge is looking good. Nothing too crazy going on. Smell freedom air all around us. <laughs> That's terrible. So far, I mean, it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. To be able to pull these hills and stuff, you know, once again, being around 20, 21,000 pounds, it's maintaining temperature. We're in fourth gear, going up some mild hills now, 2,300 RPMs, around 40 miles per hour, and the truck is doing really well. Um, once again, typical trucks are not gonna have this. If you have a 250 or a 350, you're probably gonna have, you know, if you have an E4OD or a ZF5, you're probably gonna have no more than a 373 or if you're lucky, a 410 rear end. Um, these trucks are not power trucks. They're not 7.3, you know, with Huey injection. You need to realize they are anemic. Even with everything done to this truck, we're gonna have to go down to third gear because we've got a big hill. We wanna stay above that turbocharger. Um, Back up to about 2,700 RPMs, six pounds of boost. We have absolutely no smoke behind us, and the truck's doing good. It's pulling the hill just fine. We're finally getting to where we're almost, almost out of all these hills. Um, we're back up, we're capping out the mountain now, probably around 3,600 feet in elevation. Getting closer to that 4,000 mark, but that's the majority of the big hills here. Sorry about the sun being in your eyes. We'll make this turn in a minute. Um, but once again, these don't have a VGT turbocharger or anything on them. Um, even the wastegate turbocharger that comes on them is relatively slow spooling. Um, it doesn't really make hardly any boost below like 2,000 RPMs. Um, if you're unloaded and you really wind it up a hill, and you know you want to lug the engine down yes you can start making maybe a pound or two at like that 2000 mark but realistically it's right around like 22 2300 rpms it really starts making power these don't have electronic controls so you could bog them down way way down in the rpm range and what you'll do is you'll start getting in my case because the pump is tweaked a little bit it'll start getting kind of hazy um, if you fall under bullet under the turbocharger once again, these are more of a driver's truck. You have to realize the truck and what it does and how it runs and how all the parts work together. You have to drive it like you would an old truck. Um, once you fall under the turbocharger on this, especially with you know, 20, 21,000 pounds, it, it's not good. It's just gonna start getting hazier and hazier. It's not rolling coal by any means, but it's probably producing a lot of excess EGTs. And once again, that haze, that black smoke, is just dollar bills going out the exhaust. It's not doing any good. Just get your RPMs up, shift down, suck up your pride, and get those RPMs up and you'll be fine. Right now, we're going up some mild hills. Uh, we are in fifth gear. We're running about 50 miles per hour, uh, 23, 2400 RPMs. If you notice, I'll roll on to it right up now. I'm about four or five pounds of boost. Um, and it can pull these hills just fine. One of the bad things about the 513s is once again, you're really limited in speed. About 60 miles per hour is about as fast as I like to run in this truck. Um, at 65, we're tacking about 3,000 RPMs. Keep in mind, that's almost defueling for the truck. I think the truck starts defueling at like 3,200 or something like that. Um, I've had it just out of plane and just unloaded at 70. And I mean, it's literally like, I think it's like 32 or 3,300 RPMs. The truck just doesn't make power. Um, it's not good. And right now I'm rolling up a hill. We're about two pounds of boost, about 2,000 RPMs. 
probably should have downshifted, but we're not smoking at all. And we're camping out the hill here, so not too concerned about that. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the downside to having these gears. And that's one reason why I plan on going to the 463s is because I like, I spend a lot of time running like 55 miles an hour, 60 miles an hour. And being able to cruise at about two to 300 RPMs lower without killing, you know, the towing performance because we do carry a lot of weight. Um, is kind of important to us. Now, one thing I will say is that I would not consider going to a lower gear ratio in this truck if it wasn't for the turbo swap because back when it was NA, even with the ZF5 NA, it was anemic. It was really anemic. And <clears throat> the turbocharged engine has made a fairly significant difference in performance. I found the turbocharged engine for 800 bucks. It needed some work, but it wasn't a ton to get it up and running good. I did everything ourselves, so I wasn't paying a diesel shop. And it has made a huge difference in just the drivability of the truck. Enough so where I can say, okay, I can, you know, go to a numerical lower gear ratio, lower my RPMs a little bit, and cruising and not feel like I'm sacrificing, you know, a ton of performance or anything. Um, once again, flat straight right now. I'm going to roll on it a little bit for you guys. 50 miles an hour, accelerating fairly smoothly. A little bit of a hill, 2,500 RPMs. About, let's see, six pounds of boost here. We're up to about 55 now. And we're going to go down here and get ready to make this turn, have a couple more hills to go up. So I, the reason I made this video is because I get asked a lot about towing with this truck and we just don't tow a ton with it. Like I said, we typically are hauling, you know, 10,000, 11,000 pounds, which is significant compared to what most of these trucks run around is. Um, but we very rarely tow. When we do tow, we typically tow pretty heavy because having the big 10 lug axle, the uh, Dana ADHD is rated as something like, I think for these 11,000 pounds, axle weight rating which is absolutely ridiculous um these things have a massive rear end in them they got massive hydro, hydro boost brakes it's one of the reasons i like them um <laughs> the brakes are not um vacuum controlled obviously they're hydro boost so they actually run off the power steering pump and they just offer a ton of stopping power and with that big axle um we actually had the same truck the way it's loaded out behind the 2500 hd which is my grandfather's truck, and it was majorly, majorly sagging in the back. Um, just the trailer small to orient the truck on it and have the truck in a safe orientation. We had to move it really far, far forward, further than I probably would have liked. And uh, it really, really, really squatted the back of that truck to an area to a point that it felt almost unsafe. Um, still, instead, we hooked it to this and. Yeah, it's working much better. It didn't even squat. Of course, this has like freaking eight leaf springs in the back. So, I mean, that's part of the reason why. The truck has stayed planted really good. I mean, if you're towing a whole lot of weight or even carrying a lot of weight, if you have one of these in a dump truck configuration, uh, the difference between these and an F350 is pretty significant. The, uh, the brakes are just massive. The parking brake is actually off of the back of the transmission. It's a separate brake system. Um, you have disc brakes all the way around. These these really are good trucks for the money. I feel like a lot of people overlook them, and you really don't have to. The downside to these Ford, uh, Ford Super Duties in these early years are simple. The gearing can kind of suck, especially if you live like in the DC area or an area where you're gonna have to run 70 miles an hour without getting run over. These trucks just cannot do it. Not unless you re-gear down to like a 430 or 410. Uh, plain and simple. If you have to, if you're looking at these for a landscaping business or something like that, and you know you don't have to run over 60 miles an hour ever, they're great trucks. Especially with the 513s. If you're going to be doing a dump truck, I'd probably recommend the 513s. The five or the 463s don't give up a whole lot. Um, like I said, they only drop your RPMs by like two or three hundred so not at cruising speed, so not a huge amount. But once again, even with the 463s, 
you're not going to want to spend a whole lot of time running 70 miles an hour for one of these trucks. Number one, the front ends are probably a little bit loose by now. These do have massive front ends on them as well, both the four-wheel drive and the uh, two-wheel drive variants. Um, I think Rockwell makes the front ends on these or something like that. It's they're massive. They're not a they're not a similar suspension to the front ends on like the 250s or 350s. They're majorly beefed up in these trucks. Um, but once again, the front end's probably gonna be a little bit loose. You're not gonna wanna run 70 miles an hour with one of these, even with uh, 463s. Probably, if I had to cruise the highway regularly with one, I would be looking at something with like a 430 or a 410. And once again, I'm not sure if you're gonna find that in the um, F Super Duties or the 450s. You're probably gonna have to go back to a 350 or something like that to find that. So just be aware of that. Um, I feel like a lot of guys get these trucks and they expect them to be these huge powerhouses. You're going to get ran over by even a 7.3 Congress truck. Guys, I know people are going to debate this because the IDI guys love their trucks. I'm not knocking that at all. But a tuned 7.3 power stroke, even with just a downpipe exhaust intake and like a 40 horsepower tune, is going to absolutely dominate all but the most well built 7.3 IDI turbos. Even if you have one that has, you know, an aftermarket turbo and intercooler on it, you're probably just going to be on par with a 7.3 stock 7.3 power stroke, maybe just a tier above. So that's the reality of it. People don't like to hear it. It's true. Now, yes, there is some really awesome built 7.3 IDIs out there. There's some really awesome built 6.9 IDIs out there that are making crazy power. For that cost and money, I hate to say it, but a 12 valve is still going to whoop your butt. Um, even a, it doesn't take much to get a whole lot out of even a rotary pump 12 valve. Uh, we're not even going to talk about the P7100s because, I mean, you're a turbo upgrade and really, what, a fuel plate adjustment away from 300 plus horsepower, 7 800 foot pounds of torque. Like, it's just, you're not going to get that from a 7.3 IDI without a tremendous amount of work. There's some guys that have done it, but they're far, long and far from between. These trucks are simple, cheap, and reliable, and that's one of the pros. You can pick one up for a lot cheaper than you can a Cummins. You'll be lucky to find a rusted out Cummins for what you can get a decent, clean 7.3 IDI for. And there's a lot of them out there. There's a freaking ton of them out there, if you know where to look. Uh, they are really good trucks for the money. And you do have all that displacement, which obviously displacement is nice. Because of the crazy high compression, you also get a little bit of engine braking, which is also nice if you're towing a lot. Big slow hill here, so excuse me, I gotta really wind it up here. Um, what I'm getting at by that is because these have over 20 to one compression, whenever you're going down big hills, there's a lot of times where I don't have to touch the brakes. It's not as good as a J-brake. It's not a J-brake. It's not as good as a modern diesel that has uh, your VGT uh, control braking as well as transmission braking all integrated in one. It's not going to be as good as that. Um, it's probably only going to be something you're really going to notice on either a T19 or a ZF5 truck. But that is very much a positive aspect of these. Um, I went over a pretty big hill that had about a, I don't know, probably a seven, maybe a six or seven percent grade decline. And even with this load, I was able to put it in fourth gear and I was coming down at like 40 miles per hour. I think I touched the brakes once at the bottom and I was up to like 48 miles per hour. Uh, that's really good. I mean, it would have, without the IDI, it would have been much, much faster. But I've got a problem with you guys. I'm going to be honest about it. We've got some videos that are getting very, very, very close to 10,000, or sorry, 100,000 views now. We only have 700 subscribers. I love making these videos. I love you guys helping me out. I love being able to help other people out. But please like, share, and subscribe. It helps us out so much. It motivates me to make these videos. Um, hopefully one day we'll get over 1,000 subscribers so YouTube starts treating me like a big boy. But... Either way, even if we don't get to that goal, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for all your positive feedback, all your ideas. You know, you kind of make this worthwhile. 
a lot of effort and energy goes into some of these videos. Obviously this one's just me driving and talking, but some of them had to be planned out a little bit more. And it means the world to me that you guys valued my opinions so much. I never thought anybody would care about what I had to say, but thank you. Remember, be nice to your neighbors. It's been a hard couple of years for everybody. Try to be patient and nicer with your friends and family. As always guys, please be safe all the way.